Hello and welcome back to Astronomy. This is Professor Jim Caffey. I am joined here by two of my dogs, Mr. Man, who just jumped down, and Orion right there. Orion, I told you, was the, my favorite constellation in the night sky in the winter last chapter, and I uh, named the dog after the constellation Orion. I also have Comet Caffey down there in the floor, and we'll see some comets later on. You might have noticed the picture for the course is a comet, a very colorful one. I took that back in 1996 when I was just 21 years old and uh, at Kitt Peak National Observatory uh, south of Tucson and that was a really uh, neat uh, thing I got to do. So let's jump into uh, chapter two, PowerPoints. So chapter two is on observing the sky, the birth of astronomy. So we have seen the night sky in chapter one and this is a panoramic photograph from Chile. We see a lot of photos in Chile. It's a very dark place. Uh, as you well know, the desert course is very beautiful and dark, and we have that down there. And we see the large and small Magellanic clouds down there. We don't see those. Uh, I don't see them in Missouri. Um, I think you can see them from um, southern Arizona, where I was once. The sky around us, um, you can think of the night sky as a great big globe. And we call this uh, imaginary globe, the celestial sphere. And we have some points on the celestial sphere that we like to uh, describe. <coughs> the zenith is the point directly above your head. No matter where you are, the zenith is that point directly above your head. If you go 90 degrees out, flat, you can make your horizon. Now just like on the Earth we have a North and South Pole and an equator, we have the same thing in the sky. So we have the North Celestial Pole, which is a point straight out from the North Pole on the Earth hitting that imaginary celestial sphere. And we also have the Celestial Equator which is a line from the Earth's equator to that imaginary sphere in the sky. A long exposure photo in the northern hemisphere, or in the southern hemisphere, will show you a star trail pattern like this. This is probably a three-hour image. I've taken one like this, but not quite as beautiful. It shows the sky rotating but it's not really the sky rotating as much as the Earth rotating underneath that sky. So that's what we're doing. So where you are on the Earth determines what you will see in the sky. So I see a little bit different stuff up here in Missouri slightly than what you would see in Arizona. Um, same with uh, if we were to go to Chile you would see a whole different sky. I know I have seen from Kitt Peak some things that I can only see in the southern sky that I can't see in Missouri. Um, so it's pretty neat stuff. Now your um, discussion for module one is going to be about constellations and the zodiac. And on the night sky we have set out a set of maps that describe where everything is and we put borders around different areas of the night sky. These areas we call constellations and you will recognize those as familiar drawings or patterns in the sky. But in fact what is that constellation is everything within that box around it. And so um, we have 88 constellations in the northern and southern sky. And along a path known as the ecliptic, ecliptic, we have the zodiacal constellations that you might be familiar with about a horoscope. So we have those along here, and um, those are the constellations where the sun and moon go through uh, throughout the year. Now the celestial equator on the sky is tilted 23 and a half degrees to this ecliptic. 
the path of the sun and the moon and the planets in the sky. It's an apparent path. And so we see different things, again, than what you would see in the southern hemisphere. Here is the constellation of Orion, my favorite, right here. It's really big, too. It's beautiful to see in the winter sky. Um, and so down here we have a bright red uh, supergiant star called Betelgeuse. Down here is a bright blue supergiant star called Rigel, and Rigel is blue. Betelgeuse is cool, being red. And then we have Orion's belt across the middle. And then down from the middle of the star in the belt is his sword. And right there, that fuzzy patch, is the Orion Nebula, that star-forming region. Well, we know the Earth is round because it produces a round shadow. Now we only see a shadow on the moon during a total lunar eclipse. And that's how we can see that it is round. And um, shadows on the moon do not form the phases of the moon that you see throughout the month. That is a whole different process. So in forming a shadow into space, we have light coming from the sun. And the sun is over here to your right. And that image is coming out into the Earth, lighting it up, and it causes a shadow out into space. Now, um, a long, long time ago, we're going to talk about lots of old, dead astronomers and philosophers. And Aristosthenes was one of these philosophers, and he was able to measure the size of Earth looking at the um, sun angles between two wells, dug one at Alexandria, the other in Syene, in Greece. And from this, he was able to measure the circumference and the size of the Earth very accurately. Now the Earth wobbles like a spinning toy top can, and this is called precession. Precession is the wobble of Earth's north celestial pole in the sky, and it takes about 26,000 years to go all the way around once. Now the constellations in the zodiac, what you would say your um, birth constellation is, uh, for me, I'm a June kid, so it would be uh, Gemini, the twins. Those were all made up 3,000 years ago. And so today, that's all moved about one-twelfth the way around uh, the 26,000-year cycle. And so if you read your horoscopes, you need to read the one next to it instead of the one for your birthday because it's changed and you may have been reading the wrong one all this time. We can describe a backwards motion in the sky and backwards motions are called retrograde motions. And so this is an example of a planet moving backwards in the sky. And the planet Mars is our best example of a planet that does this. Now, because we know that Mars can appear to move backwards in the sky, um, we have been able to come up with different um, systems to describe how the planets move. The first one was by a Greek philosopher named Ptolemy. Ptolemy, that P is silent. And Ptolemy said that the planets orbit around a small circle called an epicycle. Each epicycle orbits a larger circle called the deferent. And it's not completely centered on the Earth, but offset a ways. But it does have, and this is critical, the Earth at the center. We'll see what that has to do with anything in a minute. These are your zodiac signs 
There are really 13 constellations on the zodiac, but we recognize 12, one for each month. Now this gentleman is very important. Nicholas Copernicus, from 1473 to 1543. Copernicus was a scientist and a cleric who played a leading role in modern science coming out of Europe. He did not prove that the Earth revolved around the Sun, but he presented compelling arguments for this idea. And it was the foundation for what later scientists Galileo and Johann Kepler came up with. Now Copernicus was the first one to get away from that Ptolemaic system that said the Earth was at the center. That was true for 3,000 years really long time and Copernicus said I don't think so I think the Sun is at the center I think the Sun is at the center and here is some evidence for it and because he presented evidence scientific evidence his thoughts and theories were not taken seriously by the Catholic Church by the church so it didn't really get much forward motion, but those who came after him knew he was onto something. So in Copernicus's system, the sun is at the middle and everything orbits around that sun. We can also see the phases of Venus. Venus does go through phases, um, but it's not quite the same as what the moon goes through, but it's similar. And we can see this by looking at Venus in a telescope in the night sky or the early morning or early evening hours. And you can see um, a little bit or a lot lit up depending on what phase it's in. Now Galileo Galilei, known by his first name Galileo, came up to do experiments with telescopes and make observations of the sky with a telescope. He was the first one to do it. Now Galileo did not invent the telescope. It was invented by Italian lens makers. But Galileo was able to use it for the first time to look at the night sky. And so here is what his telescope looked like. It was a wooden tube covered with paper and had a lens 26 millimeters across. That's about by an inch. All right, that's it for chapter two. Thank you for joining me and my dogs in the background. We'll see more of them later on.